September 19, 2002 was the day that Our Films was born, and in 13 years, they've grown from a small group of friends, filming merely to pass the time, into a family whose passion for film that cannot be matched. From their first moments to their most recent accomplishments, they're a force that can't be stopped. They are Our Films Entertainment, and these are their stories, their lives, behind the camera. He's been there since the beginning, and his passion in the art of filmmaking has grown from a simple hobby to a career he has worked ever so hard for. He's Nicholas Barone, co-founder of R Films Entertainment. Actually, it's kind of funny, it's kind of a funny story um, as far as like how our films were started because what a lot of people don't know is um, the R Films name wasn't even thought of until 2005. We were just a bunch of kids doing film. And uh, basically, it was the movie Round the Bend that we had the name of our films. And matter of fact, the person who came up with that name was Derek Sanders. So we kind of got to give credit to him, come up with the name. And uh, yeah, that's basically how it started. With the exception of early films such as The Reaper in the Cemetery and Paranoid, it wasn't until 2004 when Nick realized what his true calling was, video editing. Can I help you? Mr. Springsteen? Uh, no, I'm his friend Tyler. Alright, Tyler. Uh, my name's Bruce Burns. Hey. With Coldwell Real Estate. I believe you talked to a buddy of mine earlier. My role in our films is varied so much. My passion is editing. I love to edit. That is like my dream thing to do. I love editing. I love having that creative control of the finished product and what you're going to do, you know. 13 years of editing goes a long way. Um, I mean, if you look at some of our earlier films, like Rose Lane, that's funny how that was done because Rose Lane was actually, we used to use these mini DV tapes. And uh, how it was edited was by a DVD VCR combo. And that's how the whole thing was edited. And if you look at it, yeah, we had the credits in there, but that was actually added in a year later when I got my first editing program. Um, directing, I've done a lot of that. I like the directing. Sometimes that can be hectic. Um, as far as acting, I hate acting. Hate acting. But yet I end up doing it. And my roles, the most majority of them actually consist of me being a cop, which is funny because... And it's usually a bitchy cop, too. I mean, you look at Justified Vengeance. He's not a piece of shit. You have no idea. And what the fuck are you doing here? Flashing your damn badge around and having your piece out like that. Look at drawing dead. You sick fuck. Fuck you asshole. You abduct children and make profit off of it. Do you have any fucking idea how many families you've ruined? Do you? Um, what is another one? The Run. Mr. Turner? Yes. You're under arrest. That's it. My life is now over. Uh, I usually play a lot of cop roles, which I have no idea why, but that's, what I, that's how it happens. So, it's, it's fun. In the years following 2004, Nick's interest in editing and directing only grew. His experience had grown exponentially, but still something was missing. Something huge, something that could potentially be the key in helping our films reach the goal that Nick had been dreaming about since the beginning. In the fall of 2012, I attended uh, Spex Howard School of Digital Media Arts. And um, my God, that experience changed my life forever. Um, it was awesome. I met some of the coolest people out of that school. Uh, Ron Griffin, Jason Haynes, Kyle Anthony Poniatowski, uh, Nick Deer. Uh, I just met some awesome, awesome, awesome people. We did a, uh, a movie for the Spex Howard film competition called The Diary of Michael James Thomas. And wow, <laughs> that was one of the coolest experiences ever. Also one of the most grueling because I, if you watch the film then you'll know 
I'm the guy that's under that saran wrap, and I was under that for about eight hours. On top of that, co-directing, um, it was brutal. <laughs> but it was well worth it because it was awesome. I mean, after we went to Thomas, we were like just so film crazy, wanted to go all over the place. So uh, we filmed, uh, I think it was in November 2013, we filmed uh, a found footage suspense called Case 116610. And uh, if you look behind me, you'll see this is actually one of those uh, locations that we shot where my character, which we kind of we played ourselves, I ended up attacking, ended up getting killed. Um, that was fun. Stupid low lit bridge. He's probably like, dude, he's, he's, what the fuck? What the fuck is he doing? Nick! It won't focus on him. What? Um, dude, this isn't time for aerobic, yo. We're lost. What the hell's wrong with you, yo? By the time Nick graduated from Spex Howard in 2013, he not only helped produce one of the best films that our films had a part of, but also he now had the connections to help our films become huge. However, Nick suddenly became conflicted with a question that had been egging him since their last film, Guilty Conscience, was shot. He constantly asked himself, where was our films heading? Is our films dead? If it was heading in that direction, would they need some outside assistance? And after deep thought and many nights of restlessness, he had his answer. Two thousand twelve, two thousand thirteen was, in my opinion, was a dark time for our films. Um, a lot of people had their own things that they were doing, which was totally understandable. Um, so it's a time where, with our films, nobody's getting paid. You know, everybody's doing it out of their kindness of their hearts, out of their free time, maybe some of their passion. So you can't really get upset when somebody can't do a film or they just don't want to do a film. But uh, at that point in time, I was kind of looking for like a new outlet. You know, I necessarily wasn't trying to get rid of our films. I never wanted it to go away. But meeting Kyle, and Jason and Ron from Specs Howard, um, you know, the four of us kind of got together and we uh, wanted to create an entity called Haunted Chariot Entertainment. Um, I know it's kind of like maybe some people think that I was selling out. That wasn't my intention. I just wanted a kind of a new look, a new face, some that people could be like, "Oh wow, who's you know who's this? You know, who are these people?" And a Diary of Michael James Thomas was technically our film's first film for the rebranding, so I don't want to take that away from our films or take that away from Haunted Chariot, but it was also Haunted Chariot's first film. If it wasn't for Brian Molka, um, I probably, I don't know what would have happened. He kind of gave me a stern talking to him, I remember it. Um, told me, he goes, dude, come on, we're a family, we're this, you know, people people root for us, we got have, we have a fan base, you know, we've had two premieres. You know, you know, we've been on Fox 2 News. Gentlemen, welcome aboard, and I'm going to read your name so that I get you guys right in order right here. Next to me, Nicholas Barone, Eric Craven, musician, used your song in the movie, and one of the stars of the movie, and also helped to make it is Brian Mulka. Gentlemen, welcome aboard. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having us. How does it feel on TV to talk about your movie? This could be the beginning of big things. How do you like it? You know, and what the hell are you doing, dude? You know, so he kind of gave me a stern talking to, and uh, I know Jeremiah Roberts. He did, he did, uh, he did the same too at that time. You know, he's talking to me. He's, and there was a lot, of, a lot of time where people were upset. You know, like, well, what the hell's going on with our films? You know, me and Brian started our films, and all of a sudden Nick's going away. Like, no, that was never my intention. Uh, I just wanted to clear the air on that. But uh, Haunted Chariot also died pretty much as it began. With Nick finally back on the train, they continued their way to the top the rebranding era had commenced. And even though Haunted Chariot ended pretty much as it began, their collaboration with Kyle Anthony did not. We all still collaborate with Kyle Anthony. Um, he has his own entertainment business called Burning Eden Entertainment. And uh, it was kind of his solo thing after the Haunted Chariot thing died. And uh, since then, we've collaborated with Kyle on um, two films. 
one was uh, drawing dead. And it turned out good. In my opinion, it turned out great. Um, visuals, special effects was fucking awesome. Um, the other one that we collaborated was one that we just did over the winter and uh, for 2015. It was called Number One Bestseller. And uh, that was great. That was great in all new levels because uh, we collaborated with, with Kyle. And on top of that, we got a new actress, Brianna Perkins. Um, she's great. She's awesome. She's professional. She knows her lines like, like the back of her hand. That was awesome. 2014 was now in full swing. And what our films didn't know was that this would be their biggest and best year since 2011. In June and July of 2014, we joined forces with Deer Street Productions and Slash Proof Productions. And we did two 48-hour uh, film projects. June was the Motor City Nightmares 48, which was a horror film fest. And July was the Detroit 48-hour film fest, which is the ones where you got to you have your, you know, you don't have a choice, but you don't know whether you're going to get comedy, you're going to get drama, you're going to get action, you're going to get, you know, I don't know, anything. Um, those were fantastic. First ever, and we came out with five awards. Came out with five awards for The Condemned. Uh, it was Best Editing, Best Cinematography, Best uh, Musical Score, Best Sound Design, Best Writing. Uh, that was sweet. Just coming out with those five awards, you know, just to say like, yeah, our film has an award-winning film. That was badass. Um, July, I mean, we ended up picking silent film, which kind of stroked us, but again, it was a change for our films. Um, and we ended up winning best in our category. We ended up winning against uh, three other silent films, and we ended up winning the best out of that one. And uh, despite, you know, the tensions that went on during the Detroit 48 with specific people, it turned out good. It was fun. I had more fun on the set of The Condemned. Our film isn't just about horror. Um, we've actually tried to expand. Um, last year, 2014, oh my god, we cranked out so many films. It, it was awesome. We did a movie called Darkness. Oh, no. Hey, Tommy. Dad. How you going? Daddy, come on now. How many times do I got to tell you quit asking me so many jackass questions? Surprise. Um, of course, we have the elements of suspense and thriller and everything, but overall, Darkness was about two brothers. Uh, one was uh, mentally challenged, and another one was, uh, you know, his big brother taking care of him, and uh, ends up making like a deal with the devil type thing. But it starts off as a drama. It almost reminds you of Mice and Men. Um, Drawing Dead, I wouldn't really consider that horror. I mean, that's more of like a suspense thing, but again, that was Bernie Eden's pri primary project. It wasn't us. Um, Fear in the Wild, that's a good example. This is the place I have been seeing in my dreams. This is the cemetery. We're going back, we're getting shovels, and we're coming back here tonight. Dude, I'm just going home, man. You can come out here by yourself. Or come out here, dude, I'll tell you what, I'll fucking come out here tomorrow. No. Dude, I'll come out we're tomorrow when it's day. Tonight. Dude, I'm not coming back. Damn it, dude! We're coming back tonight! If you don't fucking believe me, go look at the footage. What footage? Go look. Go back and look at the footage from the man trip from when you and Derek were inside and I came back inside the cabin and you two were talking. Check it out for yourself if you don't believe me. That was more or less the drama. If you watch it, it's 41 minutes long and it's mostly dialogue. You know, me and Brian fighting, bickering back and forth, all that. Um, corners. Hmm. I mean, dude, I don't even know how to work this thing. Um, oh, wait. Is it batteries? Yep, sure is. All right, hit play. Case file 87, Elizabeth Oswald. What the hell? Corner's not a horror. It's a uh, suspense. So technically, if you really want to think about it, we really haven't done a lot of horror. It's been mostly suspense. By the time 2014 came around, Nick had been editing full time for our films 12 years running, and his work definitely didn't go unnoticed. In fact, Nick received a freelancing position at an advertising agency called Donor, three weeks prior to his graduation date from Spex Howard. And seven months later, he would be hired on as an assistant editor, where he would eventually meet a talented individual whose love and passion for editing and film 
was mutual to Nick's. His name was Nathaniel Moody. Uh, me and Nate, uh, we both worked together at uh, Donor Advertising, and we both assistant editors there, and that place is another place that really changed me. Nate's a great guy. I think Nate's one of them guys who's very underrated. He's very good at what he does. People don't notice it. People take it for granted. I don't. If it wasn't for Nate, we wouldn't have had such a kick-ass set on Cornered for a remake. I mean, that thing was... Nate got us access to a new studio. You know, that was awesome. He hooked us up with Brianna, who he is currently dating now, so that was pretty cool, and I feel bad because during the shoot of Number One Bestseller, <laughs> it was like a room full of dudes. And, uh... She's the only chick. So, it was good times and great people. I mean, I wouldn't trade this for anything. With our films and Quackers Video Productions' new partnership, Cornered quickly became a fan favorite. And as 2014 was coming to a close, 2015 quickly approached. And upon arrival, our films already had a few ideas up their sleeves. Especially Nicholas, whose drive for film reached an all-time high. And by the time April came around, Nick had edited and directed four short films. The Last Investigation, Choices, Repetition, and number one bestseller. Finished. Well, can you see these tears? tears of cry. Can you of our films may seem bright at the moment, but you never know when disaster may strike. But for now, the members of our films feel very positive about their future and what may become of it. They've been running 13 years strong thus far, and that's the way they want it to remain. Our films isn't going anywhere. We're bigger than ever. We're better than ever. Uh, we got our Facebook page. Uh, check us on there. Just look up Our Films Entertainment. Um, we have two YouTube channels. We have our Our Films Entertainment channel, which is everything from 2013 to now. And then we have our Our Films Classics page, which is type in Our Films Classics. It should be on there, hopefully. It'll have our old logo on there. But it, that's everything from 2002 to 2012, 2013. So, uh, yeah, check us out. We got our YouTube channels. We got that uh, Facebook page. So, uh, yeah, check it out. Won't be, uh, won't be disappointed. Nick's life may seem like it consists primarily of sitting in front of a computer screen, editing away short films hours at a time, but rest assured, that's far from the truth. Anybody who knows me knows that I'm like borderline obsessed with films. Not necessarily Hollywood films, but our films. Um, I, I honestly believe I annoy people sometimes. I call up Brian at least twice a week, and first thing I bring up is, is movies. Or I call up uh, my buddy Scott, who's also part of our films. and. Uh, he even told me one time we were talking, he's like, dude, let me guess, you want me in a film? Let me guess, it's about film, you know, and I'm sorry, you know, that, that's what I think, but when I'm not thinking about films, I am, I don't know if that makes sense. Um, my car, I love dirt road driving, uh, I've been doing it for years, me and Mark Penrod, uh, we used to go driving back in the day when I had a Jeep Wrangler and we'd go on dirt roads and just get lost and be up until like four in the morning driving around pointlessly. We'd have horror movie music playing in the background and then stereo. But you know, and when I listen to horror movie music, it's instrumental stuff, royalty free, and it gives me ideas and motivation for other stuff that we can write. Um, I don't think I'd ultimately I don't think I'd be where I am without my wife, Brittany Barone. Um, she is such an inspiration and such a motivator. Almost to the point where she's a pain in the ass. But she is the one person I can thank. Uh, she's the one that actually pretty much forced me to go into Specs Howard. I've always wanted to go into Specs Howard. But uh, I never, you know, it was always money. It was always like, can I afford it? You know, how long am I going to pay in this damn you know, school loan? But uh, Brittany, she kicked me in the ass. And she told me, hey, you're going to school. You're going to do something with yourself. You're not just going to do these films just for the fuck of it. You know, you're going to do something with it. And even if, like I said, 
she even told me the same thing. She goes, if you don't make a dime with our films, at least you know that you have the education and you can do something and you can make a career out of it. In some way, shape, shape, shape form, you're going to be able to do it. Um, so I can't thank her enough. And I love her with all my heart. last year on August 31st uh, and it was it, it was cool at the wedding too because my groomsman was the faces of our films you know Sean Jones Brian Wolka Jeremiah Roberts uh, Derek Sanders uh, Tony Pollitt you know everybody that I could have had there was there and it was just great sharing that moment with them you know and uh, Nick Deere for shooting the wedding film. Yeah, I appreciate that. But uh, yeah. You may now stand to salute Mr. and Mrs. Nicholas Barone. Come on, show your love for them. I have a solo company that I run. Um, it's called Witching Hour Entertainment. And basically, Witching Hour Entertainment centers primarily on photography and music videos. And once in a great while, I'll kind of slap the name on a film. Like I, I slapped Witching Hour on Corner, for example, because that was a movie that Tony and I primarily did ourselves as far as pre-production. But uh, Witching Hour is my baby. Uh, Nick Deere of Deere Street Productions and I collaborated on uh, three music videos. We did uh, Black Soul Swamp's Brother, and then we did, did uh, two Eric Craven songs, uh, Invincible and Does God Exist. Black Soul Swamp, the uh, music video that we did for them, was the coolest experience just because it was the first time that I was directing, that I was directing more than like six people at once. We had like 50 people at the Diesel Lounge in Chesterfield, Michigan, where we did half of this music video. And being able to direct all these people and be like, hey, you're going to do this, or you got to do this, do this. When they start singing, you jump up, you know, you start headbanging, or you do whatever, you start moshing, I don't care. It was the coolest freaking thing in the world. Nicholas is thankful to everyone who has had a part in our films throughout the years. Whether it's in front or behind the camera, good times will always be remembered. In Nick's case, the early days are what he will remember fondly of the most. My favorite time on set, I would have to say, would be when we did The Third Wheel in 2008. Um, out of all the films we've done, I mean, I've had a great time doing everything. You know, it's like, but The Third Wheel, there was just something about it that was just carefree. And it was, all, it was actually Jeremiah's first official film. And Jeremiah has a great passion. He's great at what he does. He's a terrific actor. <laughs> Derek, who I mentioned earlier, uh, came up with the art film's name, and uh, I actually, we're redoing, we're rebooting The Third Wheel, coming up in May, and I can't wait for that. Da, 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 go, go, go. Found footage films are my cup of tea. They're, they're my 
my thing. You know, case 11, 60, 6, 10, found footage. Uh, Fear in the Wild, found footage. Cornered, found footage. Uh, third Wheel, found footage. I go forever, but that's just my thing. I love found footage films because they're they're real. And then tack back around. Let's make this, shut up. <laughs> and uh, we'll make this our rendezvous point. Like you get in the minds and you get in the heads of these people, you really feel for them. And uh, a great example of that would be Corner. Yeah. Oh my god. Goose! <laughs> <laughs> what the f is your problem? We tried to help you! Cornered the Remake is a movie that I see myself watching over and over and over and over again. I love Cornered. I love that. Tony and I went through so much pre production on that, it, it just turned out great. Um, and of course, with the, the help of Nate Moody, um, it couldn't have turned out any better. It was awesome. It looked so great. Scott Templeton, I think he pulled off uh, the news reporters who tried to pull off a Dateline NBC thing, you know, and I think Scott did great on that. Um, so, yeah. Nick knows that without the ones closest to him, he definitely wouldn't be where he is today. And as of April 2015, the R Films count is at 79 features. Within those are 49 short films, 22 full-length films, 7 documentaries, 1 music video, and countless special features. 13 years ago, Nicholas Barone had a dream, and with the help, the devotion, and the loyalty of Brian Mulka, Jeremiah Roberts, Sean Jones, and Anthony Pollock, our films has never been better. And Nick tries to remind himself each day that without them, there isn't an R Films. His skills in video editing and directing has no boundaries, and his passion for it will live with him for the rest of his life.